hard to stand up. It's nice. Yeah. My legs get really stiff. <clears throat> huh? Stream's going? Yeah. Oh, wow. Which stream are we on? You, oh, both of them? YouTube and, and you stream? Live stream? Live stream. Stream's live? Stream is live. Woohoo! What's up, guys? Hello, hello. Can you hear us? The uh, drop cam, the drop cam audio, we're having trouble with our login to drop cam trying to get the audio turned on, but uh, as long as you can hear us, I guess, on, on the uh, live stream, then we should be good. Paul, can you hear us on Ustream? You got audio? What's up, Paul? What's up, Paul? How do you think? Uh, uh, how do you think you pronounce? Is it Derek? You think Der D R R C K? 11? Probably. I would, Derek. I would go Derek. Derek. Dirk. 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 Or Derek. I would say Derek. That's the safest bet. Yes, you need your sunglasses, huh? Oh, drop cam audio is on too. Mm. You got the login. Got it all. Ken, you got. Um, okay. Apparently, I'm logged in. Oh, there we go. Yay! I can control the drop cams again. You are the man. Hello, Brian. Space bats. Brian got a nice surprise in the mail today. Was that by any chance your patron package? We sent a huge batch of those out the other day. I had to take them all to the, uh, to the uh, post office. But boxes and boxes of those things. Awesome. Glad they went out. Yeah. What's up, Tommy G? He said, is yes, that Tommy it was. G is in Sweet. guns. Hello from Israel. Hello. How are you? That is, it is late over there where you are. Geekbeat is owned by Google now. I wish. <laughs> Who let me back in the country? That was a good question. Yeah, somebody at Customs or Immigration I have, wasn't doing their job. I snuck in. I have my ways. I'm sneaky like mm -hmm. that. Were you in disguise? Something like that. Kind of like the Mission Impossible Came mask. through back channels, you know. Makes you look like Tom Cruise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. We're hey, going to have Allison fun today, and Cam I think. from 45 Drives. Hello, hello. Hey, what's happening? Thanks for what's joining. What's up, guys? 45 Drives have some, am I allowed to talk about the thing that we emailed about earlier? Can I talk about that? I think, I, I think I'm allowed to talk about it. But just to make sure I am. The thing? Yeah. The place? Yeah. Ben, did you, get the, uh, did you get the email with those attachments that we sent you about 45 Drives? About the stuff? They're having an awesome day. Well, that's good. They are having it's an awesome day. It's kind of rainy and cold here. Not so awesome. Well, they're in Canada. It's even probably rainier and no, colder yeah, there. You're right about that. They're like way up in Canada. <laughs> ben says I wrote oh, a post on yeah. it. So. Okay. Yeah, he wrote a post. Good, good. How many rants do I have stored up for today? Well, oh, how many weeks boy. has it been since I've been here? Quite a few. That's why I'm standing back. The thing is, we don't have we we don't have any. They just like 40 p. Oh, next to that thing. Yeah. <laughs> why? Like, I'm surprised they even bothered to put a camera in it at that point. Yeah. I know. I mean, they took out the LED Apple logo and all that, too. What chocolate goodies do we have today? Nobody brought me any chocolate goodies today, damn it. Although, yesterday... I this is my fault. I take the blame. <laughs> it has uh, nerds. Oh. And it has... Uh, Gobstoppers. Yeah. Butterfingers. And also Nestle Crunch chocolate bars. you got to add some variety. <laughs> That's uh, right. <laughs> See, this is my fault. If I hadn't canceled on going to the gym, you probably yeah. would not have gone and bought the big bag of sugar. That's true. If, we, if you hadn't canceled on the gym, then I would have... Uh, you would have worked out instead of... That's right. I'd have worked out, and then I'd have been like... I looked at that candy bag and be like, no, I just burned those calories off. <coughs> I'm not going to put those back on. All right. Robbie! Hey. How are you? Good. What's up, Rob? Oh, wow. He's ready to start. Okay. Do you know your lines? Line. I don't think we have those people. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess I should also... Um, 
I'll keep I'll keep the old Twitter the the Twitter client open. Okay. So if anybody wants to tweet questions at, or comments at us, good idea. You may do that. I I will uh, not have the Twitter client open. I guess I could actually. Uh, I do. The John P. Oh, uh, when I was out of the country? <laughs> uh, was this something about, somebody was talking, there was something where somebody got the color of something wrong, I don't know. Oh, the dress? Yeah. Oh, let's not talk about that. If we're going to rage on something, it's going to be that I don't even remember what that was. Dress. I was in Barcelona, and uh. somebody said something about it. But we were in the middle of prep for the uh, for the Samsung event, so I, I didn't really even hear about what that was. Yeah. It was I, the, bizarre. Somebody made a joke. It was, we were at the thing, and somebody made a joke, and they they said something was not the color that it was. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I totally went by me. And they're like, didn't you hear about this other thing that was related to that where somebody said S And I was like, no. Hmm. No, I did not. It was very short story. There was a picture of a dress. Yep. It was a very washed out picture. Yep. But for some reason, some people saw it as a white and gold dress. Other people would look at it and see a blue and black dress. Okay. And it just went nuts online because everybody was seeing it a little bit differently. I, I, I definitively, without question, saw black and blue. But a lot of people saw gold and white, and it was like almost starting fights online. I mean, people were getting, it is gold and white, you know, mad at each other. And I would look at it. You need what, a new what, monitor. Here's what was very strange. There was one occasion. Should I save this for later? I don't know. We're just going to roll into it. Did we talk about it on any other shows? It's really old news. It is old news. Yeah, now. but I was out of town, so I don't know anything <laughs> about it. I mean, we could. I don't care. You guys should just start, start talking about the, uh, the nice gold color there behind on the wall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll be but what was weird is one time I did, I looked at it blue, black and blue, and I scrolled down, was reading an article, came back up and saw the picture, and it looked white and gold to me. Uh, Just that one time. It was very funny. weird. So. Yeah, white balance like, is like uh, your major, minor dominance of what you see yeah. your color. There's a good thing on DNews about it. Mm. Yeah, I did find a couple articles that explained how it was happening. Or well, I hope everybody happening. enjoys my yellow shirt today, so... <laughs> yeah. We both have skulls on our shirt today, though. That's kind of cool. We're going to talk about that. Are we? Oh, yeah, we oh, are. Oh, my. We are going to talk about that. All right. I'm ready. Let's do it. Hey, Dave, when do you switch to four? What? When are you going to switch to four? Oh, I guess, actually, I guess it you start out today. No, you do. It says Apple's $10,000 watch. I know, but John. that means you got to start with, hey, I'm Scott, and I say oh, yeah. I'm John There's B. Apple and thing. on today's episode of Geek Beat. Yep. Oh. And we start in the middle camera, right, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> I had a hard time with that last week, or week before. Yeah, we start on the middle one, and then I'll say, and I'm John P, and on today's episode of Geek Beat, dan, 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 bam, pew! How'd you like the sound effects? <sighs> I'd like to Magical. apologize to all the people who are here in the live audience today who have to watch this thing oh, in person. They're going to have fun with us It's today. bad enough when you have to watch it through a, through a camera. It's even worse when you have to watch it in person. But these people are gluttons for punishment, so what can we do? I think I feel I gotta push it out. I know, Rob. he's got a, like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta birth it every okay. single week I'll like it was a talk child. talk about something else now. Like Rob, it's not vodka, it's just water. It's <laughs> HBO for cord cutters. Things we'd rather be doing. A special guest from the CEA. And how to be a pirate. It all starts now. <laughs> Hey folks! Hello, hello! Welcome back to another episode of Geek Beat Live. That is Scott Ellis. And that's John P. That is he true. is back! They let him back in the country! Can you believe it? No. I've been gone for weeks. I gave them ins explicit instructions <laughs> not to let you back into the country. But I think you underestimate my sneakiness. Apparently. Yes, and it is also Friday the 13th, 
So basically anything that could go wrong will go wrong. And it has in a couple of ways. I think. It has been going wrong. Been I've a had a day. bad day. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Why was your day bad? Well, it started out with our toilet and our sinks and all this stuff getting all stopped up at our house today. Why? I don't know. I what got happened? What did you do? I didn't do anything. <laughs> That's the thing. You, you want to have like a big hey, story, you can be white, proud. White flush. I know. You white, gotta, white flush. You, re, routine flushing should do it. There was, not a, there was no problem with the toilet, but then this morning I went and got in my shower and uh, turned on the shower and I started noticed that the water started like building up around my feet, but we, we don't have like a tub shower. It's just a standalone shower. So uh, all of a sudden, you know, by the end of my shower, my feet were like submerged in water and it was not draining. I was like, what is going on? And we've also got a tub. So I got out of the shower and I was like, okay, I got to deal with this shower situation. And I look and water was coming up in the tub. Like the pipes are all backed up. So do you know what caused it? Probably at Holly Pose's long hair going down the uh, track. I don't know. Yeah, that can do it. I don't know. It wasn't mine, okay, but now we got to call a plumber or something. I don't know. What was your, what happened to you? Well, I took my car in for an oil change. That was a mistake. Because I got it back many thousands of dollars later. <laughs> That's what you get when you drive a fancy sports car. Oh, it's not that fancy, but it's you know, pretty fancy. It, it needed some work and. Yeah, it kind of ran itself up there a little bit. Now, to be fair, uh -huh. I didn't have to pay the whole bill. Oh, you didn't? Because I had an extended warranty, which covered a decent chunk of it. It was oh. still a lot of money out of pocket, but fortunately not the whole five grand. So It was five grand? It was the total bill. That's wow. not how much I ended up having to pay. Yeah. I only paid a couple. But. Uh, well, uh, Chuck yeah. left. It went down. Those two wheels were almost five grand. Can you believe that? Just for the two wheels. Two wheels were almost $5,000. Do you miss your flight? What happened? No, we took a different, we took another car, oh. but they left it up on blocks. They got the two back ones and the front ones. They only got like they almost got them, but something must have interrupted them. And uh, so we called, and a tow truck came out and brought some wheels and towed it to a, to the shop. And it was it took them almost three weeks to get these wheels. Yeah, you win the bad day award, and you're on the way. You're trying to catch a flight, and you come out and you find no wheels on your vehicle. That's not that's good. not a good way to do it. So. Now, this was on the way to uh, Barcelona. To Barcelona for That's right. We went out there. Uh, actually, Callie, Callie had to go out of town somewhere else. And so Amber Mack went with me to Barcelona, and we hosted the live talk show after the Samsung Galaxy Unpacked event where they launched the new S6. This was at Mobile World Congress. Though, it right? was indeed. Very good. That's yeah. a big conference. Yeah, it was a big conference. We got, I think we got, we'll talk a little bit about the old S6 and All some right. of the things that went on there later on in the show. So that'll be fun. And uh, are you going to stand up the whole time? I am going to stand up the whole time. Because you're too sore. Because I can't sit down. Because it was leg day two days was, ago. Yeah. So John and I started working out again. You've been ignoring the legs, I haven't you? I've been totally ignoring legs, and we did leg workout two days ago, and I still can barely walk. Yeah, yeah. That's bad, but so it goes. All right, well, I tell you what. We're going to come back from commercial break here in just a second. We're going to talk about all of this stuff and more. So don't go anywhere. Actually, you can go get some popcorn or some chips, maybe have a Coke. A glass of water, a little bit yeah, daddy. Co Coke needs to pay me. Oh boy, we do need to figure out how to get Coke to sponsor this show. That would be good. Ah, <sighs> yes. Bet we, I bet we could get Deep Eddie to sponsor the show. We, that's right. We probably could if we sat here and got liquored up all over it. <laughs> would that be a problem? No, no, not the at all. The show might actually be funny. It would be better. It would be better. <laughs> uh, Shocker is pointing out I should have had wheel locks. Yes. Well, yeah. Yes, I should have. Can you believe that thing came from the factory with no wheel locks? Wheel locks cost 20 bucks, okay? For a set of freaking wheel locks on a car that cost, I don't want to tell you how much, it was ridiculous. The and way, they didn't have the stupid wheel locks on it. Look, on the way in yesterday, I was really hoping you were going to be here yesterday because I'm driving north on 360. Boom. Armor wheel locks. Don't let this happen to you. And it's a car up on blocks. All four are gone. And I was like, armor wheel locks. I got to tell John. That is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never seen that billboard. I had no idea. I just, I never looked. I didn't even look because I've only had the vehicle for like a couple months, right? Maybe two months, yeah. right? So I didn't even look at the wheels. Uh, 
I mean, I think I had the vehicle for less than six weeks when this happened. And if you're second. anything like me, know. when you're on the way to the airport, you need to get going. You're usually running on time, if not a little late. Yeah. There's no time to waste. So no. walking out and seeing that would be very disconcerting. I had no time to deal with it. Unfortunately, we had to, I had to leave it for somebody else to deal with. So, Hey, uh, Shocker wants to know, where's my Mexican Coke? I don't know. I don't know where it is. I'm drinking this crappy stuff with the high fructose corn syrup in it because, eh. Better than nothing, I guess. I do have the Twitters going, so if you guys tweet at me, we can uh, we can definitely answer Q and A and stuff like that through Twitters today, the Tweetosphere. And other than that, I guess we should get this thing going. Let's keep going, Davey boy. Yes, sir. Are you ready? Sure Let's do it. All right, here we go. So you can get the get us started with this first I'm segment. All right, everybody, welcome back to Geek Beat Live. Good Indeed, to have you here. We've got a whole new format for the show since I was here last. We do. We're doing different things. It's kind of fun. Well, you got to tell, t right. lead us into it. How does this work now? Well, first thing we're going to do is talk about some stories, and we're going to answer some questions. Okay. And then at the end, we're just going to talk about whatever we want. Nice. Now, the first story is... Is Callie going to let us get away with that? Well, she's not here, so... <laughs> I guess she's going to let us get away with it, then. <laughs> not what she can do about it, at least not until she gets home. Uh -huh. So let's talk about Apple. Okay. They had a big announcement this week. They've got the Apple Watch coming out. What do you think of the Apple Watch? I got to admit, when, I, when, when we first heard the announcement about the Apple Watch... I thought it sounded really great, like so great that I was thinking to myself, wow, I might even give up my Samsung phone and move to an Ooh. Apple phone just to get that watch. Um, but lately, that enthusiasm has waned because of some of the other things I've been hearing. Now, interesting. Do you, okay, I want to hear why. Yeah. But I also wonder, do you think they made an ex a, a mistake to some extent? by announcing it back when they did and giving us all time to think about it. And has that why maybe some of the excitement is went? Because it has for me a little bit too. Yeah, I think, I think that there, there was a big gap in the time. And I don't know why they made that announcement so far in advance of the release. Usually, I, I'm guessing they just didn't have anything else good to talk about. <laughs> so they just had to yeah, say something. But be. usually with Apple, they would do something like announce a product and say, you'll be able to get it within a week or two or something, you know, start the pre-orders and all that other stuff and, and people be really excited and jump on it. But I, I don't think I would have acted any quicker back then anyway, because I have become so conditioned to smartwatches being bad that I would not buy one without trying it out first, playing mm -hmm. with it, hearing reviews and things like that. And Unfortunately, some of the things that they've talked about with the Apple Watch are things that I'm not really all that thrilled about. Okay, for like, example. Like battery. So it turns, so I, I've been wearing this little um, Samsung uh, Gear Fit for, I mean, God, I'm probably like more than a year now that I've been it's wearing been a long it, time. importantly. I only have to charge it like once every three or four days. Yeah. Now, if I charge it more often, great, but I can go for several days without even thinking about charging it. And the Apple Watch, as I understand it, they're saying it's good for, a, the charge is good for about a day. Yeah. That is just not long enough for something that then is gonna take, what, an hour or two to charge? Yeah, I agree. I think, with, especially if you're gonna have something like that that you're probably going to use a lot, that means you're gonna get less than a day out of it. You yeah. Know, for me, one of the big reasons would be to wear it when I'm working out. Yeah. So I don't have to have my phone in front of me all the time, but I can get the metrics and the things off the app, but. You know that's gonna that sucks up a lot of juice. Yeah, so they. I think they last. quoted that their their standard about a day was for you know x number of messages and this long of listening to music and this yeah. long of exercising. It was like 30 minutes of exercising, which you and I spend twice as long as that at the gym when we go. And, every day. And then on top of that, we're kind of power users, so we're gonna have lots more texts and messages yeah. and everything else coming in. So that really worries me because the prices 350 bucks for the sport version, um, $399 for a slightly bigger version. Then if you want to step it up a bit, $550 to $600. This I is mean, not a cheap accessory. And then of course, you know, for those of you who might look at the Apple Watch and think, well, I like the fact that you're gonna be able to get thousands of applications eventually mm -hmm. and do all this stuff, but I don't want to use an Apple phone because I like my Android phone. Eh, too bad, you just, 
doesn't work like that. You, right. If you're an Apple person, you get the Apple Watch. If you're an Android person, you get one of any of the Android watches, and the two do not mix. Well, we'll see how this goes. I think they're a little bit on the pricey side, and I'm worried about the battery life, too. But a lot of people out there may like them. If you guys try one, let us know what you think. I want to hear about it. What do you think about Do you watch HBO at all? You know, I was a big fan of HBO when I was a kid, and we first got cable, and HBO was a big deal to have. Yeah. Um, I cut cable years ago. Yeah, so you don't really care. I don't really care. However, I remember when Netflix started their original series of things, yeah. that that was going to make a dent in HBO's business. Like, that was what HBO should have been doing, is like original content. Well, they've always done good original content. Yeah. HBO does some fantastic stuff, but they should have been putting it out online. And I think this is a response to that. Yeah, so HBO is going to let you buy the HBO service without going through your cable or dish provider or whatever. So um, you'll be able to buy HBO just like you would Netflix. But now it's going to be hard for them to compete with Netflix because Netflix has a huge library of stuff plus their own original yeah. content. And HBO, I don't know. I, I mean, they kind of get movies and things, right? But I don't know that they're not gonna. They're gonna have a hard time competing, and they're gonna charge fifteen dollars a month. I mean, that's more than even Netflix. It is. However, the the quality of a lot of HBO's content, I think, is sufficient. That I'll bet there are some people out there that are gonna pay for it. Oh yeah. I, I would consider it. They've they've done some really good stuff, and I'm you know my wife and I are big fans of House of Cards. Which is, of course, a Netflix show. Yeah. But if there was something, you know, even just comparable to that that was on HBO, I would probably pay just to have it so that we can watch that and a few other things. That's true. So. That's true. Okay, there's one other little thing we should talk about, uh, and then we'll have to take a quick break. But it's very, very small. Yeah. What? Literally, <laughs> literally, very small, right? The new MacBook uh, Air, right? Yeah. What do you think about it? Not interested. Really? Yeah. Not interested. Flat not out, even. Not in well, first of all. Oh, it's it, just it is called, the new MacBook. It's yeah, just it's called the MacBook. Sorry. Um, yeah. I, I love a slim, lightweight form factor. I went down to the 13-inch Pro so that for travel it's as light as possible, but I've still got all the power that I need. Yeah. Um, however, I'm really bothered by this whole just one port thing because I usually have so much stuff plugged into my laptop. Yeah. That that's going to be problematic for me. Very so quickly. the new the new MacBook it's super super thin. It only weighs two pounds. It's got a 12-inch screen, right? Yep. And it only has a single port. It is a USB Type C port. This right. is the new type of USB. It's coming to everyone, and it's going to be super fast. And the best thing about it is, uh, you know how you try and plug in a USB port, a USB plug, and it's n it's never the right way. You have to turn it over to plug it in to get it to go in. <laughs> that is gone, thank God, with USB yeah. Type C. You just Plug it in. That's and a nice improvement. You're good, but you would you would only have one port. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to plug in like a little hub, and then have lots of devices hanging off that hub. And they do make a dongle that goes along with it. The dongle's like eighty bucks. Doesn't that well, include the yeah, power port? Yeah, eighty bucks. The, por the power port is is it's coming USB through the USB, USB yeah. Type C as well, huh? So that's your power. Then you have to yeah. like jack stuff into your yeah. brick. Maybe yeah. we don't know. I, don't I, know. I guess. Which is sitting on the floor. Yeah, I'm yep. not sure how that's going to work. I, I just thirteen hundred dollars. That's how it's going to work. Yeah, they're going to charge thirteen hundred dollars for it. The screen's a little small for me too. Yeah, you know, I'm down to a thirteen. I can't get any smaller for what I do. I mean, you can still get a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro that yeah. are thirteen inches, and they cost the same amount of money. They're going to have a little more power. They're just not quite as thin. And I don't know. We'll have to see if anybody's going to buy it. I'm not going to buy one. I, I'm not either. I think if I was going to go that far, I would just I would go get a Chromebook or something. That, I agree completely yeah. because I think that you could spend 350 bucks on a touchscreen Chromebook if all you need is basic stuff, yep. and you'd be su super happy. So, all right, guys. Hang on, we're going to be right back after this next commercial break, and uh, we've got uh, we're going to field some comments. And I just don't think it's going to be the right machine for a lot of people. Yeah, I just don't I'd be surprised. See, it's it's to me with all the with the limitations on the ports and the physical screen size and everything else. Yeah, I've already got that right here. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's it seems like if that's all you're going to need to do. Why not get you a really nice Chromebook, like a touchscreen Chromebook? And you can do your email, your web surfing, your, you know, whatever. Write your blog posts. Yeah, all that. Do, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm and not sure touch screen. Is, I'm not really sure who it's meant to cater to. I don't understand where they're going with it. But. Will somebody please tell me what the hell is Apple's problem with not coming out with a touchscreen? 
Why do the computers not have touchscreens? You can't tell me that they don't see the value of touchscreens. Every damn iPad they put out since the beginning of time <laughs> is a touchscreen device. Every phone is a touchscreen device. Why can they not figure out that we want touchscreens on our freaking computers? I don't know. I do know if they put one on the new iMac, though, with that 5K screen, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. I know. Oh, that thing is beautiful. Yeah, have it you really seen one up front? Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, yeah. I don't care if I can't carry it with me. It's, that's good stuff. All right. Uh, let's see. Davey boy, you want to keep it going? Yes. All right, let's, let's do rolling. it. How are we doing on time? I'm not seeing any Pablo Well, Pablo was giving us the wrap-up early, oh, but... It? We ran over. I can't see him behind Carter there, so yeah. you're going to have so to take the lead. We're, we're three over. That's we okay. Moved, we moved him down to the next section. So Who? We're going to do the Q&As and talk about the, your episode this week. Oh, no, I just, I, I, we have the, this one comment here. Okay, in that case, let's, bring, let's go ahead and bring him on and, and get him on, and then you can, you can finish up the thing about the... Um, the, the the watches the, or 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 we can really actually cool. should we just skip that because we yeah. we'll just skip that okay, we'll great. just skip it Steve, let's go and, get on set. and we'll bring Steve up great you want to come join me over here sure. and then he can well, what are we gonna do so Steve's gonna come and we're just gonna talk about some of the CEA Foundation stuff that's going on which is well you'll see let's do it um, if you cool. get one of your business cards out that's a great little thing because talking about Braille and stuff and yeah you can get a close up of it. Well, I don't know if we want to expose all of his details. Well, he hands it out to any Tom, Dick, or Harry that he right. on the street. Right, right. There we are. Which all two of those beautiful? It's got to step over just a hair. Toward John? Yeah. <clears throat> there you are. How do you pronounce your last name? Yule. Yule. Yeah, do, but I don't know if we want to. We'll, we'll try and hide your details here. Yeah, that's all right. Like your contact details. Everyone can uh, call and donate uh, to the foundation. Donate some money to the foundation. <laughs> that's a good idea, actually. We'll, I am very happy. We'll tell them to do it. <laughs> oh. You're too tall. You got to sit down. Oh, okay. Yeah. You and me both. <laughs> Plus, I want to sit down because I'm lazy. Better. Steve, pull over to the center. <laughs> Rob was there like, Steve go. needs to sit. He is tall. <laughs> <laughs> Paul says, I guess Apple's argument would be they're still selling a lot of Macs. That's true, but that's because that doesn't mean that people are happy with their Macs. Like, I, I bought my most recent uh, MacBook Air because I felt locked into the Apple ecosystem because I've been using it. But that doesn't mean I'm happy with it. I literally have not been happy with my MacBook Air since I, since I bought it. I've not been happy with it. And the primary reason is because... This thing has been sitting on my desk, and the app and the and the surface uh, on this Microsoft Surface is touchscreen, and it's so freaking nice. And we have touchscreen Chromebooks at home, and it's so nice. And then you gotta you get stuck with this little trackpad. And although Apple's trackpad was better than everybody else's, it does not take the place of touching the screen. It just doesn't. Yeah, you really like that Surface, don't you? I really do like it. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're talking about it in a little bit. That's why I brought it with me. So. Okay. Right. Yep. Let me get audio from Steve real fast. All right, testing. A little more? Testing. Perfect. You sound beautiful. There you go. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. All right. Are you ladies ready? Let's do it. Let's do this. Yep. Okay, I'm going to come back to a two shot of you guys. And actually, Steve is, runs the CEA Foundation, yep. and you guys are focused on all kinds of initiatives for people with special needs of all sorts, right? 
Yeah, well, I really How do you describe the CEA <laughs> Foundation to everybody? Well, the CEA Foundation, we are affiliated with CEA, the Consumer Electronics Association, which I know you guys know from International CES and Indeed. all the, the mm -hmm. cool, fun gadgets that uh, we get to show out there. But essentially, we are a philanthropic foundation focused on how technology can change the lives of older adults and people with disabilities. Nice. So essentially, we are a fairly new organization. We launched about three years ago, uh, but we've been able to find a number of nonprofits profit organizations that are using technology to really make a difference in people's lives. So it, it's just amazing to, you know, one, play with these technologies that, uh, that we get to highlight on your show and everything, but then look at how those can help, whether you're talking about a homebound, a homebound older adult who has become kind of isolated from their community, isolated from their family. Well, it's amazing what from some fairly simple technologies can do to reconnect them and really make a difference in their lives. Um, or, you know, working with the, the blind and low vision community or the, the deaf and hard of hearing community, mobility, you know, kind of across the board, uh, there's a lot of opportunities for technology to make a difference. What are some of the more interesting technologies that you've seen recently or things that are coming out? Well, you know, th there's quite a few different technologies. I, I think, actually, one of the things I really enjoyed viewing at uh, CES this year was all the smart home technologies. Because mm -hmm. quite frankly, those are technologies that all of us as consumers are interested in. I think all of us are, are exploring ways that we can adopt those in our home. But if you are someone with a disability, the ability to just take out your tablet or take out your phone, take out other kind of products and have complete control of your environment yeah. around you. Yeah. you it's, it's one thing if, I, if, if the lights in my house are all controlled by an app and and if I want to be lazy and not get up and walk across the room and hit the switch, that's yeah. one thing. But it's another thing if I can't, if I physically can't walk over to get the switch, to be able to do that remotely all of a sudden, change the temperature on the house or, you know, whatever, right? That's, that's Know whether you locked enabling. your doors, know yeah. whether, uh, yeah, just the, the color of the lighting in the, the room if you'd want, you know, things like that. It, it seems like it's a fairly simple technology. But the ability to really you know, make an impact is there. Then you can also look at how that can go with caregivers because all of a sudden if you're you know, working with a parent and you can go in and see you know, what is their thermostat set at. You, you can have that kind of peace of mind by having those connections. So I yeah. think that also when we, when we look at how certain voice technologies are going to integrate in with those home automation technologies, that will be a whole nother advancement. Let's say if you... I mean, if you were maybe a paraplegic and you couldn't even, you, you could talk to people, but you can't do things, you don't have mobility anywhere. Uh, imagine having something like Amazon's new little Echo device that just sits in the corner of the room always listening for commands. And if that could be uh, uh, tied into your whole home automation thing, then you could just say, you know, hey, Echo, whatever you named it, uh, you know, unlock the front door. Somebody rings the doorbell, right? unlock the front door or whatever, and it just does it. You know, how awesome would that be? Well, that's kind of the fun thing is looking at the different interfaces that are there because, you know, you were talking about touchscreen or not having touchscreen. You know, that's one option there. Voice control is another. Gesture control is another. To you guys. Uh, you know, that, that is reason enough. But uh, What boondoggle brought you down here for that? Uh, no, there's a few reasons to be here in Texas and, and really uh, happy to, to and thank Thank you again for showing me around this awesome building you guys have here. Glad to have you. Uh, but you know, yesterday I had an opportunity to, I was actually down in Houston uh, and visiting one of the grant programs that we supported. It's actually called Bridging Apps. Uh, they're a program that's actually out of Easter Seals of Greater Houston. And they're looking at all of the mobile phones and tablets. There are so many applications that come out on a daily basis. And, and we've done a lot of looking at what the hardware is as far as accessibility. But those apps can make a big difference in accessibility. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is looking at uh, how accessible those apps are. They work with developers as far as helping make apps more accessible, as well as you know they do a lot of programs in the community. In fact, one of the, essentially what we help support they. You know, being a program of Easter Seals, were really focused on uh, kids and education, and, and but they were immediately flooded by people of all ages looking for this information. So we've helped them in, engage with some of the senior centers in the the area uh, to look at how the technology can help on that side as well. So had a, a chance to spend just an awesome day visiting with all of them yesterday, and then you know a, a chance to come up here to Dallas and and you know to 
you know, really make the, the Texas tour complete. That's right. <laughs> he head from here down to Austin uh, for a, a great time at South by Southwest. Uh, I'm actually going to be speaking with the Bridging Apps people uh, during a panel there, as well as uh, on, a, on a couple other activities. And then CEA itself is going to have quite a few different activities. Uh, you know, Gary Shapiro, who I know is a good friend yep. of, mm -hmm. of all of you, uh, is going to be speaking there and, and others from the CEA team. And Gary might, he, he usually does some on the scene reporting from uh, from from South by for us so maybe he'll maybe he'll Skype in or something for a, for an update or something like oh, that this year he usually do, does that well and I don't want to trump the boss there <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna get your whole whirlwind tour of uh, driving through Texas it, 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 it's a little bit of people don't quite understand the size of the state until they get here because for example you've already experienced the drive from Houston to Dallas which people are like, oh, it's two cities in Texas. But Houston to Dallas is actually farther than, for example, D.C. to New York City. So you, you get a little bit of a taste for that. Yeah, I was noticing that and trying to, to figure out, you know, how far would it have been if I was on the East Coast. Now, with 95 traffic, uh, usually that just takes extra time. Yeah, you yeah, don't right, move right. anywhere. But yeah. uh, no, it wasn't too bad. There are Good. parts of that drive through Texas where you feel like you're not going anywhere. <laughs> it's not always pretty. L luckily, we've got very high speed limits. Yes, so. we do. That, fortunately. And fast cars. So Indeed. I love your business card, by the way. You actually have Braille on your business card. I've never seen this before. Well, yeah, can we get a zoom in on this? Look at this thing. And, and, and I'll just say that's something that, you know, obviously focused on accessibility. Uh, and we've had a chance to work with a, a lot of groups within the, the blind and low vision community. Um, so it, it just made sense to be able to make our, our as much of our information accessible as possible, um, and, and yeah, everybody's it's business fantastic. card should have this on it. But how do you even get that done? That is so yeah, hard. I've never seen this as an yeah. option. It's oh. not like you could just check the box at Kinko's and get this done, you know. <laughs> so how did you make it happen? There's actually the, there's a company I think it's called the American Printing House for the Blind, and they sell. It's essentially just a little embosser that you know they put your information on there, and you know I'll, I'll admit I don't I don't read Braille, so uh -huh. you know I I got it. This back. could say anything. I, I, I printed the first one. Had to <laughs> pull up the alphabet on the computer and then go like line by line making sure you know it wasn't saying bad things about me or whatever uh, but yeah you, you know it's it's pretty easy to do uh, and essentially they they provided that and now I can just get cards and, and uh, you take any card stamp it stamp it and it has my good. information on what that. are some of the different ways that people can get involved with the foundation there, there's quite a bit and you know one uh, certainly I would encourage people to go to cefoundation.org uh, we have information on all of our grants there, uh, programs where we're going to be, you know, certainly I'd encourage if people are interested in supporting the foundation. Uh, Make you know, a donation. Uh, yeah, the, there's opportunities there. Uh, you know, I don't want to uh, push too hard. There, That's okay. But, we no, will. We'll do it for you. Uh, it. But yeah, no, uh, CEA has been uh, great in supporting the foundation, but we are looking at how we uh, build the foundation that way as well. But we're also looking for opportunities as far as, you know, what are your users seeing as technologies that are either helping them in their lives or you know opportunities to improve technology as well that's something that we can also provide feedback to the industry uh, so I'd love it if they want to you know either go to the website and, and, and provide feedback I think uh, they're putting my Twitter uh, information up there so yeah. um, you know essentially uh, they can uh, follow up with me on there as well so they've got stories and and things that tips of how they're using technology or ways that it may be impacting them especially if they are if they have any special needs or whatever and those kind of stories are helpful. Yeah, and I, I'd love to hear that kind of feedback. And, and yeah, those kinds of stories are, are very helpful or, or from loved ones and, and others that mm -hmm. uh, have experienced this. Um, you know, that's, that's really what I'm looking to gather. So um, that'll help us help to uh, continue to improve the technology that's out there and, and make a difference in people's lives. Sweet. Good. All right, guys, hang on. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to tackle your Q&As. And uh, who knows what else? Maybe light something on fire because it's been a while since <laughs> I've lit anything on fire. You wouldn't be offended. If uh, I, no, I, I kind of assumed it. Was <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Right. Thank no, you very thank much. You. All right. I had a conversation the other day with a guy who's an audiologist, and he was telling me about the new um, in-ear hearing aids that they're they're yeah. giving to people that have Bluetooth built into them. So even um, for things like when they get a phone call now, you know, they can just turn on their phone and, and they can hear it through the hearing aid and they have devices in school. So like when the teacher's talking, she'll have a little microphone and it 
piped it straight into the hearing aid and things like that, so they get this really good crisp audio and One of my daughter's interesting friends stuff. has uh, cochlear implants, and the mm -hmm. teacher um, wears the little mic on a sling around her neck like that, and all, all her teachers have one, so when she goes from class to class, there's all the background noise, it's filtered out and everything, and she's hearing crystal clear. Well, you know, I have, I, I've lost about 50% right, of my I'm hearing in my now. right ear, so I, I really... I'm going to try. Is that okay? <laughs> I really do have a, a hard time hearing out of my right side, and I want one of those um, hearing aids that does the Bluetooth. That's I can hook you up. We've actually been Bless looking you. at... <coughs> Excuse me. Bless Kelly, you. I met the guy Sorry. That, uh, that's on the development team for the cochlear implant about four years ago. Okay. Yeah. He said at that, at that point, he said, you know, they learn how things map in the brain, and then, then they can make a chip yep. to, to be the interface. When we talked to him, they were working on a larynx Where they? chip. That, and he said, what's cool is with that kind of stuff, it can actually go anywhere in your body. So they can put, put the larynx chip right up here, like where you'd put a pacemaker. And then just you know do the wiring huh. and stuff, and you're talking. Well, yeah. I just want I just want to be able to have my uh, hearing aids in so that I can hear better, like bionic ears, you know. But then be able to be ha having a conversation with someone right in front of me who thinks I'm paying attention to them, but really I'm rocking out to some music, <laughs> you know, from my. Usually blue. walking around with like this little this brass thing. Yeah, I need out. one of those horn things. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're yeah, actually but, looking at you know right now one of the challenges is. Hearing aids, you know, quite frankly, they're they're fairly expensive, yeah. uh, and, and we're looking at, you know, is there the opportunity to do kind of like the eyeglass model of, you know, for people who have significant hearing loss, you go to the audiologist and, and get the the high end hearing aids, uh, but if you have kind of lesser hearing yeah. loss, they have these personal sound amplification products, uh, which are essentially hearing aids, but not kind of going through the whole regulatory. I've tried some of those, by the way, and, and so you know. They're not, you know, they probably, if you have significant hearing loss, they're probably not going to meet those needs. But for people with lesser, it's kind of like, like being able glasses. to run down to the yeah. drugstore and get reading glasses. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's something that we're I've tried at. them, and they work pretty well with, uh, with two exceptions. One is the battery life is a problem yeah. uh, because they're just not expensive devices. So they, they maybe last one day or something. And, you know, or a few hours of continuous use. And the second is they sound a little bit tinny, kind of um, uh, metallic-y almost a little bit. And I think that real high quality hearing aids don't have that problem. They sound yeah. exactly like whatever they're amplifying. And of course, then you get those little batteries that'll last for like seven days or something of continuous use, you know? I don't know. Yeah. No, it's a. But it's five thousand dollars versus two hundred dollars. So exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. All right, we have a couple of questions. Uh, let's see, Scotty boy. Have we gotten a couple in on Twitter? We do. We've got. I have not gotten we've got a couple yet. here. Uh, what device do you want to use the most that you can't get your hands on right now? That's a good question. Oh, that is a good question. I know what mine is. That you can't get your hands I on. I absolutely right? you know. You go. What, I got to think about. I this know one what it is. It's the Gear VR headset, the Samsung Gear VR headset, and they make it for the Galaxy Note 4, uh, and or for the S6, the new S6. And the thing about it is, Lance you put. Yeah, I think I think we actually have one yeah, in the other. Here. I mean, we don't should, be don't be wrong. We got that and an Oculus here. We yeah, can't get it. I've had my hands on it, but Oculus here? most uh, people can't. Yeah. I, I he might have one back there. I, I played with it. Lance got all kinds of crazy, yeah. crazy yeah, 360 you stuff. He's pulling out red cameras and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. His office is. But that's the one for me. I think everybody, when that Gear VR headset becomes generally available for yeah. people, it is going to, you're just going to freak out, okay? Because when you put that thing on and you can play games or watch movies, let's say you want to watch a movie. It changes everything, okay? You, you load your movie on your phone, you snap your phone into this thing, and it becomes like a massive 200-inch screen right in front of your face. You put your little Bluetooth earbuds in and uh, ignore the world, pretty much. I could do that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It sounds like bliss. I don't know. You got anything? Um, actually, Paul, I, I had kind of forgotten about this, and I was trying to think of something. Paul Dixon mentioned... The Microsoft HoloLens. Oh yeah, that looks really cool. Now I hope it lives up to. 
what we're what we're seeing. <laughs> Um, you know, we've seen a few things like that kind of come our way from Microsoft and other companies that didn't quite live up to I it. I forgot, but. what's the HoloLens? Well, that's the one that you, you put on the thing and it gives you like a ver uh, overlays virtual reality on the things yeah. you're looking at, right? Yeah, basically. So like you could have a desk and then you could see something sitting on the desk or immersive, something. Immersive, yeah, kind of experience. So you could even, they've, um, I think they've been talking about using it for things like computer modeling so oh, you know, right. you're, you're modeling a car and you can oh, take things off right. and move them around and Minecraft, yeah and of course just, Minecraft it right yeah I remember really they wild. they had like a motorcycle or something yeah. like a 3D motorcycle and they were standing around looking at it and they were like well move this part over here it's very uh, what's that Iron Man no, well kind of yeah very <laughs> Iron Man and yeah. or uh, what's it called with Tom Cruise Minority Report Minority Report yeah um, that's so that the one thing I can't get my hands on right now that would be it that would that would be yeah yeah that would be, be good fun. I would also I would also probably say that um, uh, the other thing that I w can't get my hands on that I would like to to play with would be the new NSX oh see for me it's the new Ferrari they just announced know, hey. the yeah. 466 yeah mm. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, let's maybe see. we can go car shopping after this. Right. We are supposed to go to the car show, aren't we? When is the car show? Oh yeah, in that's Dallas coming here? up in a couple weeks. Um, oh wow, there's a lot more new messages here. Uh, let's see. Is the Samsung Galaxy S6 going to be the must-have smartphone of 2015? Shocker one wants to know. It is difficult to say if it is the one to have because. I don't know what else is coming out, yeah. but I can tell you this, of all the smartphones that are out there right now, having, I think, I think Amber Mac and I have literally had more time with the S6 than anybody outside of Samsung in the world. It is legitimately the best phone I've ever, I've ever seen, okay? In many, many ways, it is a sweet phone. And you know I love the Note. So usually I would go with, for a bigger phone like this, but the S6 is almost, it's not as big, it's only like a five inch screen, but mm -hmm. it's big enough that it's pleasing and it's beautiful. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> and uh, I heard that, Carter. Yeah, I didn't even think about what I said there, but they're gonna be quoting Welcome that. Home, John. They're gonna be quoting well, that we on Twitter now. We have to edit that out of context for sure. Hashtag big enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hashtag, it's big enough. Um, and it's, uh, it's smooth. Yep. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's, anyway, it's really, really fast. It's really fast. Very, very touch responsive. This is a children's show. Do you put it in a soft case? And yeah. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Moving on to the next question. Uh, <laughs> Oh, nice. Those those questions came from Carter. How many seven-year-olds could you take in a fight? <laughs> also, if you're in a canoe paddling upstream and the wheels fall off, how many pancakes can you fit in a doghouse? That's a that's a good question. I'll have to think about that yeah, one. I'll have to get, get out my algebra book. Yeah. Yeah, I have to think about that one. All right, let's get back to this thing, and uh, we've got some actual other Q and A's some, some teed up questions. for the show. So we'll get to those here in a minute.
right, everybody, welcome back. Yes. I'm Scott, that's John. That's true. It's and time it, for some questions. It's Q&A time. These are questions that you guys sent in to us. Now, for those of you who are currently watching live in the chat room, uh, we were taking other questions, which I don't really have to tell you that because you were here. But for those of you who are watching on TV, you can always go to uh, geekbeat.tv forward slash live where you can join in the chat room as we shoot the show live and you can watch all our crazy antics between, you know, between During commercial break. Yeah, yeah. that Fun too. Stuff. All right, you ready for some questions? Let's get in. I want to ask you this first question. Uh-oh, what's the first question? So the first question came from Charles Phillips. And he wants to know, when you're not working, what do you do for fun? You guys do know how to have fun, right? That is a good question. <laughs> uh, oh, so that's really two questions. You do know how to have fun, right? I do know how to have fun. Okay. <laughs> yes, I know how to have fun. I will say that uh, I know, and I'll speak for Callie a little bit here, too. Um, I know that we tend to do a little too much working um, sometimes and not enough fun stuff. And so we've been, we've been trying to make a, more of an effort to have a little bit of extra time it's to do that kind of thing. thing to do. Yeah. yeah. So, but for things that personally I enjoy doing uh, when I'm not working, I like to, I like to, you know what, I, I like to do certain things that are probably boring to some people. I like to surf on Pinterest. Believe it or not, I love Pinterest. Yeah, you've kind of caught All on to of that sudden, lately. Yeah, I've gone yeah. nuts on Pinterest. So if you, if you want to see the crazy crap that I like, you can go to, I guess, Pinterest.com forward slash uh, John Pose, I think. You're on Pinterest, too, and I, I see am. yours coming. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But okay. I like Pinterest. Well, did I, I like pin to, something bad? I like, to, I like <laughs> to light things on fire. That is no joke. I really do. I like to weld stuff. I like to build stuff. I like to chop things into pieces. <laughs> Uh, I like to break things. I really, really well, like, to, like break to break things. you like to break things so you can then go back and fix them. That, that I, mean, I do. You know. And I like to build stuff. And I like to travel. So I should probably say I like to go visit my nieces. Hi, girls. You do. You go to Houston fairly often. I do. Every hang couple. Out, yeah. See so, family. Yeah. So, and also things for fun. Oh, and yeah, my nephew. He's all right. He's here. He's all right. <laughs> uh, so, also. Um, I like to watch movies. We have a dollar th room. It is. It got work? transplanted. It still works great. I had to replace the bulb finally in the protection. Oh, did you? Yeah. When we yeah. get downtime, it's media room time and, and travel it. as well. Yeah, travel. Wendy and I love to travel. We'll go anywhere we can. You guys like to go to beaches. We do like to go to beaches, although we're planning a, a European trip. We still have not actually taken our honeymoon. Are you going to take a European vacation? We are. Chevy Chase style. Look, kids. Big Ben, Parliament, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> good, good. Okay, We're going to Italy. So. Yeah, Jason Wynn wants to know what would you be, what job would you be doing if you weren't doing videos at Geekbeat? Well, I have another job. That's you do. Yeah, Tell them what you I do. I build websites That's for true. companies. That's yeah, true. Myself and uh, my uh, uh, the other guys, Martin and Juan, who are part of the team. As you well. got a whole and, team. I got, and there's hopefully going to be some more pretty soon. So would you be doing? Would you? Is that? Do you like doing that? I actually do. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy the process. Um, I, I think the things that we do to me, it feels like we legitimately help a lot of of these small and medium businesses um, to have a much stronger presence on the web and, and to look better and give them things that are functional. We're doing a whole bunch of sites right now that are these like old static HTML sites that. They're not responsive. They don't work that well. They're not ADA compliant. When you say you're doing them, you mean you're reworking them. Well, we're reworking the websites. You're not building them Re that way. Rebuilding them. <laughs> yeah. Yes, correct. We're taking them from that state into, yes. Nice. Into WordPress. And if I wasn't doing this, I would probably be doing nothing. I'd probably be laying in a gutter, drunken like a bum. Well, either that, that or I'd be like a corporate executive, a C-level. It's one or the other, people. I am either like a CEO. <laughs> Or I'm in a gutter. That's it. There's no in between. <laughs> I want to come visit you. I miss you. Yeah. Or when so, are you coming back to visit us? That's, yeah. That's when, the when, question. When we lost Pelpino, we lost all the talent around here. <laughs> Except for Cali. We well, still yeah. have Cali. But other than that, you know. No, I don't, so, I'd love to go to the Netherlands. I've never been there. Have you? Uh, I have been. Have you? I have been, I've been all over the place over there in, in ye old world. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's right. a couple places I haven't been, but that's because they probably wouldn't let me in if I wanted to go. All right. Well, Pelpina, we'll give you a call when we're coming. Yeah, we will. Uh, we do have, we had another episode that we released this week, and uh, we, we talked about, I, I did that episode that and talked about the new S6. So maybe, you know, during the, during the commercial break, 
some some folks ask questions about the S6, and actually I've been getting a lot of questions from people like, is it really that good? I mean, should I get one? What's the deal with it? Yes, it really is that good. Now, I realize that Samsung actually paid me to do like the S6. It's a badass camera. Okay. It's a cool phone, but it's, bad, it's a badass camera. Tell you know me. how much I, I love more. my cameras. Yeah. The camera on this phone is amazing. It's got like a super uh, low light sensitivity lens on it. It's f1.9 uh, aperture lens. It's got a nice 16 megapixel rear facing sensor, a five megapixel front facing sensor, real time HDR. So when you turn on real-time HDR and you're looking through the screen, you're seeing exactly what you're going to get when you snap wow. the thing, which is cool. Can you adjust the levels of HDR? In it has an auto HDR feature, which kind of magically determines how much HDR to give it. Right. And then it's got like on, where you just turn it on and it's all the full HDR. Got it. So you can't... It doesn't have like a little slider, like how much HDR you want. I would like to see that. That'd be kind of cool. But nobody has that yet. No. But the other thing that it does is it has some manual controls. Now, what they don't have, but I talked to, I, I interviewed one of the engineers on the camera team, and I asked him, when are we going to be able to shoot raw images? Because these sensors and the, 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 the cameras are getting so good on our phones, I want to be able to capture it as a raw image as opposed to a JPEG mm -hmm. so that I can then manipulate it more. And he said, yeah, we've looked into it, but it's not there yet. He kind of alluded like that's something they might have in a lab somewhere. Maybe we'll see it in that the future. Would be cool. that would be I said that could be a, a pro feature that we could enable. My God, can you imagine if we could get full manual controls on these things and shoot raw images and stuff? It'd be insane. I'd love to see it. I, it's got to be a matter of time. Before, I mean, the, we've got the mirrorless cameras coming out yep. now. It's got to be a matter of time before these things are... Now, it's not ever going to be the same as having, you know, a big L-series lens and that kind of no. glass. But, it's but some pretty good pictures on these it things. It is. And what if you had a little attachment where you could add lenses onto this? Yeah. You know, so it might have its own built-in thing, but then you could maybe swap them out and do really artistic kind of higher-end photography. Phenomenal. It would be crazy. The it. other thing we talked about on the show, the other big thing was how to bootleg movies. How to be a pirate. Yeah, that was interesting. I'm interested uh, that you kind of went down that path, Not that so. Dave would ever do no. that. No. No. Or any of you would ever do that. But, yes, if you were going to do it, uh, or if you were curious how the criminals did it. There are options. Now, here's what, I, here's what scares me. Because I was watching this episode, and I was like, oh, yeah, there's a lot of movies I haven't seen. But, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but here's, here's what concerns me. Yeah. Is that... If everybody it, does it? Well, no. It's that if a company wanted to get savvy about the people that were trying to steal their movies, uh -huh. they would launch their own service like that. Yeah. You know, kind of black hat yeah. style. And then capture and then all they, your IPs. They've got, they, they know, because you're going to have to give up some information, IP address or something, to do this email, whatever. And you're just setting your... I mean, that's that is true. Like walking into a trap. That today. is true. However, however... I'm just paranoid like that, I guess. However, but. the pirates have already thought about that. Because one of the things I didn't tell anybody in my episode about this, um, this uh, application called Popcorn Time, mm -hmm. which is yep. kind of the premier one, and it runs on all platforms, they have a VPN kind of service built into it. Mm -hmm. So you can pay somebody for an anonymizer kind of VPN service, mm -hmm. and then you can run your popcorn time through it to make your illegal bootlegging activities untraceable. And those services are like does, maybe does $3 a month, maybe. Does popcorn time take Bitcoin? Yeah, they Wow. No, they, but the anonymizer services do take Bitcoin. There you go. So yeah, you could really, I mean, it's bad. It is, but I, I guess- It makes you wonder if, 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 an, if so many people start doing that, and Netflix said that it is a huge competitor to them all of a sudden. If so many people start doing that, how are the poor people who are making these movies, spending all this money, how are they going to get paid? How are they going to make money? Eventually, it's if everybody's gonna, stealing it, all the content will stop. Well, this is what's happened to music, all right? I yep. mean, and the movie industry has been trying to head this off for a very long time. Of We saw what happened to the music industry. How do we keep this from happening to us? I, I mean, I hate to say it, but it feels somewhat inevitable. But the in problem, some way. the problem is, like in the music on the music side, if people are stealing MP3s, you're not getting paid for that. But those those uh, those 
artist will still go to venues and sell out a venue if they're a popular artist and yeah. they can make money that way. They can make money doing other things. If you're making a movie, you only get money from selling the movie. Unless maybe you, you, you're Star Wars and you have merchandise or something. Yeah, you know, there's but, merchandising. There'll probably be more product But not for all movies. No, certainly not. So our movies are just going to be full of product. Yeah, probably. They are. Our movie I mean, I can't imagine why anybody would do that. Right, exactly. I don't know. And speaking of which, but. we're going to commercial break now. <laughs> mm. Go get yourself a drink and then come right back. We've got unboxings coming up in a bit. Ooh. Let's get to it. She's done the Wayne's World. Yeah. Diddly, diddly, diddly. Yeah. Well, I will not bow to any sponsor. <laughs> I was thinking about what you were saying about John breaking things. Don't forget about the stuff you have to fix that he breaks. That's right. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Uh, the only thing I have to worry about is the website when he breaks that, but that hasn't happened in a while. Yeah, it's been a few months. They don't let me touch it's it. It's been a they've, year. They've locked me out of it. <laughs> Did you notice I don't even update the plug in furs? I totally agree. I love that guy. Well, I get to hang out with Colin when we were in I Barcelona for several days. So you, you may not remember his name, but you may remember some of the crazy stuff he's done. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there was a, there, a while back, I first came across him when I was thinking about, uh, who was it? Uh, Phil, I think used to work at a company that that did like those mobility scooters and i was like i want to get one of those scooters and soup it up and make it really fast well anyway they found <laughs> they they found uh, uh, over around with like a blown yes blown absolutely i was like i want mine to go like 40 miles an hour or something and i was gonna get one and i was really gonna do it and then we searched and found out this guy named colin furs had already built one that goes like 80 miles an hour and uh, i was like oh well i won't no well, i can't beat that you know that's who it was <laughs> Then later he made um, he made all kinds of stuff. He made this suit that he gets in inside of, and he goes walking into the middle of a fireworks show because the suit's all made of steel. He you know, made it, it, he it made Wolverine like claws. Suit. It kind of looks like the first uh, gen Iron Man. Suit a little, that he, yeah, yeah. That he made in that cave. A little, and and also yes, it did, yeah. And he also made Wolverine claws. I mean, that, like real, like. <laughs> and he also made a flame shooter thing and. Yeah. He builds all kinds of crazy he did stuff. Gravity boots, where he was walking on the. That's uh, right. The ceiling Upset, yeah, shot. yeah. He crazy stuff like that. So like, I got to hang out with him, and uh, we are. I mean, I, I swear to God, we're like brothers. <laughs> Only he's in he's in the UK, so we got a little distance between us. But huh. he's if, the British John P. He is, yeah, yeah. So he's really cool. Hmm. You uh, know. But he's been actually spending his time building all this crazy stuff, and I haven't been. So I need to catch he up. Could, he could, Yes, yes. That's a that's a John P. Colin first product. It is, it is. We that need to build we need to build nice something. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Paul's got his you go to colinfurs.com. That guy is awesome. And he's super nice too. Super nice. Yeah, I love that Paul guy. Are probably buddies, aren't they? Yeah. And Steve Thompson, the three of them. Paul lives a little further away than Colin does, I think, from London. Colin's only like an hour outside of London. Or I can't and actually I think he had to fly into London. I can't remember where he is. I can't remember now. Anywho. Oh, he didn't. No, he flew into Barcelona. That's why, because he's a little ways outside of London. But we weren't in London. I don't know where I was, people. And then you went to Greece. And then I went to Athens. So that was fun. I get to visit with my family. My family. So, all right. Are we gonna come back and do our little, uh, our host's corner thing? We should. So we'll kind of take turns on the stories, on going back and forth or something. I think that's good. I've got a couple more. I've got in here. I just didn't enter them in but okay. a couple of cool things to talk about. Cool. We'll talk about some stuff and then we'll and then we'll unbox some stuff after after we do that. Let's do it. You ready, Dave? I am ready. Cheeky promo went to Athens in 1996. That was a little little while ago. Mr. Cheek, how are you? Hey guys, welcome back. I'm just checking the old Twitters here because uh, I saw that Jonathan Tot said, I just tweeted you some questions and comments, John. Uh -oh. So Did you get we'll, some good ones? We'll get to those. Well, I mean, we'll get to those here in a little bit. So, uh, okay. But we do, have, we do have a couple other little updates and things to chat with uh, everyone about, right? You want to go first? 
No, I want you to go first. You want me to like go first? I like where you're starting with this. Do you? Okay, yeah. well, basically, I was going to give you guys some updates on a few of the projects I'm working on because people keep asking me, like, uh, it's been a while since I've done something like my my solar panel array mm -hmm. or whatever. And, you know, what do I what do I what am I working on? Well, I've got a whole bunch of projects that are brewing in the works. So here's some updates. I'll share them with you guys. And by the way, I know there's a lot of you out there who have more expertise on some of these things than me. Uh, I'm kind of a generalist. I don't go super deep into one thing. Specialization is for insects. That is right. That, yeah. that is true. So uh, here's some of the stuff I've got going on. First of all. Um, at my house, of course, we have all kinds of NAS servers, QNAPs, Drobos, everything else. I have at my house a Synology unit. It's really a nice one. It's the 1815 Plus. It's a big 8-bay NAS. And I am in the process of installing the surveillance station option on it and then hooking up IP cameras to it. Because remember I told you my damn tires and wheels got stolen off my mm -hmm. truck? Well, we're gonna put cameras all over. It's gonna be like a compound, okay? There's gonna be cameras everywhere, just like at the Geek House. I like it. But, no, Phil, they will not be public drop cams. However, <laughs> uh, I, I am in the process of trying to figure out how to get all those things connected to, to run on Synology's built-in native server so that's a lot more complex than you think because i got to find the ip cameras and the mm -hmm. ip cameras that i want have to do power over ethernet so you don't have to plug power in everywhere you put a camera you just take ethernet there right so then it's a question of what switch is going to power it and what camera and which what camera is decent and what some are wide angle and some are not wide angle and it's really complex you're going to need a whole schematic for that i literally am going to but i'm going to do a whole video once i get it installed and tell people Here's exactly how I did it in case you want to duplicate this. That will be a good DIY. Yeah. Good tutorial. Yeah, that's one of them. Okay. So since this whole thing, this this our corner here is about things that we're kind of obsessing about right uh -huh. now. For me, it has been the change in my training routine. Oh, yeah. Which is why I can't walk today. But I've switched over. So we were doing a pretty good routine for a while. But it's good to mix these things up and change them up from time to time because your body gets used to what you're doing. Um, so I've gone to a, a high intensity uh, training routine, and what does that mean? That means basically you are going, going, going the whole time. Like you, so, instead of me spending an hour to do my workout, it takes me about 25 to 30 minutes. I get no more than 30 seconds of rest between each set, um, and I am just pushing it really hard the entire time. Yeah, nonstop. I'm too lazy. I can't do that. I love oh, yeah. it. It is yeah. it is fun. You get in there, you do. A whole lot of damage and you're done quickly the time goes by like that now the downside is when you first start doing that kind of training um, you're gonna get sore all over again and yeah man I'm telling you uh, <laughs> not my brutal, fault. Not, but it's good you yeah. should try it no I'm not gonna Come do on, that no do I don't have any interest all right I want to get bigger I want to get stronger but I don't really care about uh, cardio this, well, kind of this, stuff. No, this would actually probably help that quite a bit huh. because I've pumped up the weight a lot um, I'm getting stronger faster so I'm actually it's a good change up. I, I'm actually hitting some kind of personal uh, records with some of my weightlifting type stuff. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that feels good. I don't think you can really tell. I think uh, I think I kind of look exactly the same as I have for months, and it doesn't fluctuate very much. That bag of candy you bought know. yesterday. Well, that that's too. Not yeah. Open. You sell it mediocre. Yeah, I am. I am. I am the best when it comes to being mediocre. Well, another thing that I've got going on is, and Ken. Our super engineer is helping me try and figure this one out. So you know I told you that I've got the Synology. I'm going to put the surveillance station on it. We've also got other things on it like we're running Plex and we got movies on there and things like that. And sometimes I want to access things on my network at home from outside of my house. Yep. So we can do that here at the Geek House because we've got a VPN that runs directly off of our router uh, that's you know the main router for our switch. It actually runs a VPN built into the router. The one problem is that router is fairly complex to configure because you got to use command line interfaces and things mm -hmm. like that. So I told Ken, I want to find a router that basically anyone could implement in their house fairly easy using a graphical mm -hmm. user interface, like a web-based interface, that would allow us to set up simple VPNs so that you can get to your stuff from anywhere. And we are currently investigating several different options on that. 
and Ken's gonna help me test it all out. We're gonna get it all documented up and share that with everybody so that we can all have access to what we have at our home when we're not at our homes very, very simply. I like so that. that. That's, that's gonna one. be a good tutorial because that's a, a great thing for, I did an episode a couple weeks ago on security. That would be a great thing for people to know how to do, but the, the usual VPN is a little too complicated for your average yeah. user, so. Yeah, so we're looking for a, for a simpler right. one, yeah. I like it. So speaking of training, you're wearing some Bluetooth earbuds. I am. Oh, I'm, I was going to talk about those. How do you like yeah, those? I love these. These are absolutely my favorite. I got to show them off. That was on my list of things. So these are these headset. This headset uh, is made by LG, and they make about three or four different versions of this. Okay, this one is called. The, the, they're all the LG Tone series. You can actually see it says Tone back here, kind of. You kind mm. of. Eh. There you go. I think these are brand new. See, it says Tone, yep. but there's several different versions. This is the top of the line version. It's called the Infinum. Infinum. Now, they their list price is like 150 bucks, and if you go to Best Buy, some Best Buys carry this, but this is the highest end version, so some don't. But on Amazon, you can get them for 103 dollars, 103 to 108. It kind of fluctuates a little. I took the Amazon app into Best Buy and they match the price. So I got these at Best Buy. Let me show you what's cool about them. Right on. When you put them on, first of all, when you have Bluetooth earbuds, usually it's just two earbuds with a strap that goes around your head. Right. And that thing hangs and it puts weight on your, on your ears and it can kind of not hang well. These, there's two little earbuds right here. You see them? Watch this. They pull out their retractable cords, stick them in your ear, they're really tiny. They're practically weightless. Okay. And does the collar bother you at all? They're you're working no, out or anything. You does don't it? even remember this is on your neck, and because you have this larger the piece, this yeah, the like collar. The one his wife has for him. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I'm so used to a collar around my neck. Um, because it's bigger, they can put a big battery in it. So this thing has <clears> 17 <throat> hours of like continuous talk time on your phone That's or something. Pretty good. Like. 19 hours of music or something ridiculous. You can basically go all week with this thing without charging it and using it a lot. Hmm. So it's really sweet. I really love it. And I've tried everything, but this is the one that I've chosen. I wear it all the time. I forgot I even had it on. Yeah. That's, yeah. Because you usually don't wear that on the show, but. No, I would not. I have to admit, when you pulled those out, I thought you were, it, they were just going to retract and you were going to be like, hi, my name is John B. Would you? That would be funny. Be my friend? That would be funny. <laughs> yeah, they have a little button, so you pull it out. And then there's a little button, and when you push the button, <laughs> just it retracts. just retracts. I've got a pair yeah, of I know the... That's, I know that was hard to see, sorry, yeah. especially against my black shirt. But Do it again. Anyway, you go like that, and you push the button, and there you go. Well, i got a pair of the, um, the Jabra Bluetooth earbuds, and they are kind of like what you described before. They're just earbuds that fit in, and then there's just a cord that yep. connects them, um, so you don't have the collar. I really like them, actually. The way they're designed, they, they stay in my ears very, very well. And as much as I'm bouncing around on this new training routine, I have no problems with them coming out or anything like that. However, the the, the loose cord kind of dangling does bother it can snag me sometimes. On, it can snag on a shirt. You know where it's really bad is with a hoodie. Yeah, if you I go can out, see if that. you have a jacket and the jacket collar is hitting it, or if you have a hoodie on, it just yeah. totally you can't even turn because it'll yank it out of your ears. And that this does not suffer from the from that issue. Mm. So there are some new ones coming out. They're not out yet, but I've seen some new headphones that are just purely in-ear Bluetooth earbuds Sweet. that are on the way. So that'll be, that'll be cool. All right, I'll tell you what, we, we, uh, we have boxes, and I want to get to that. And Pablo's been giving us the wrap-up here for a while. Pablo. So you guys, hang on. We're going to come right back, and we're going to go to the unboxing time. And uh, Pablo over there can stop stressing out. I need a knife. <laughs> yep. Okay. <clears throat> we didn't. We didn't talk about our skulls. No, we should. We get. We have to get to that. Uh, still. We'll have, to, right. we'll have to do that. I believe it was Doctor Colonel Captain Kirk who made this shirt. I'm jealous. That's a good looking shirt. That is nice. Yep. Well, and it's really. Yeah, we talked about it, but we never did it. Never I don't know. We we probably we should. Have, busy around here. Yeah, we probably should. Uh, we probably should do that, but we didn't. We didn't get it made. Uh, oh, we we had some questions. Let's get to our other questions oh, yeah. real quick. Let's see. 
the J Tot said, I saw you were hanging with Colin Furs. You, you guys need to do a video together and you need to blow something up. I agree. It has been <laughs> way too long and since I blew since I actually blew something up. Um, also, you should check out Valve's VR offering with HTC's V V V V I V E Vive Vive H M D and Lighthouse technology. It might blow your mind. Sweet. Cool. Yeah, I like lighthouses. Janny is upset that there's no robot segment on today's Geek Beat. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no robots. That's no because Cali, Cali no is robots. no Cali, sorry, no Janie. robots. <laughs> That's right. All analog all the time. All right. Uh, let's check in. Let's do a check in. Oh, we haven't done that, have we? Let's do a check in. Do it we, now? We'll do it before we come back, right? Because yeah, we're way, way, way over. Oh, Guys, yeah. let's do a check in. Where are you at? Where are you at? Go. Who's going to be first today? Let's see. There's, wow. this, this lets you know how long the delay is in our uh, uh, in the broadcast. Is it that long? Yeah, there you go. Lancashire, UK. Rob Lancashire, came in first. You're going to have to read Tallahassee, fast. Appleton, Wisconsin, St. George, Utah, Nottingham, UK, Paducah, Kentucky, Baltimore, Maryland, Buke, Orlando, Orlando, Florida, Florida. <laughs> Gothenburg, Sweden, Drammen, Norway, Wakefield, Massachusetts, Tune, Denmark, San Cristobal, Venezuela. Sweet. McKinsey, British Columbia, Canada. Logandale, Nevada. Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. Bristol, UK. Belfast, UK. Hopedale, Mass. Yeah, only and about only a, a snow. Foot of snow left. <laughs> Good for you. Kepler 186F. Mandrake <laughs> Falls in Deeds Pizzeria. Nice. Yeah, Robotlandia is now sand Sadlandia. Sadlandia. <laughs> nice. Tarnowski, Gory, Gory, Poland. Jedburg, Jedburg, England. Uh -huh. Nebraska. Just Nebraska. Julian is in Austria. Good day, mate. <laughs> West Bromwich, UK. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska, Imatra, Finland. Uh, <laughs> ah, apparently I said it right. The Great Borg. Yes. You've been assimilated. I have been indeed. Cool. You guys, I'm always amazed that everybody stays up in all these I crazy know. time zones. All over the world. I was the, over there in those time zones, okay? <laughs> this is late for them, okay? So, uh... Gozumel, Australia? Nice. Nice, Carter. I'm going to start looking Carter, out for you the pseudo-editor. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks for checking in, gang. Okay, let's come back from commercial break, let's and let's it. open boxes, because we've got one, two, three, four. We got five. We have five Did of you them. bring your knife? I didn't bring a knife. I always bring my knife. Buddy, everybody's favorite time of the show. It is unboxing time. It is indeed. So, uh, Callie's not here today. You get the honors. I will ask you the question: small, medium, or large? Large, please. <laughs> okay. I know you like them big, uh, Sky. <laughs> here you go. Oh, and it's already open for me. Yes, the it's box already is ready. Pre, what do we have here? Pre-sliced. I do not know. It oh, looks like it's from Bank. It is from Bank. bank? I like just about anything from. Bank. Sweet. So what do you got the, there? This uh, is the Trivolo. Trivolo. I'm guessing this is an audio All right. player, but I don't really I think that, really that know. it looks like a speaker. It looks like, an, uh, it yeah. looks like a speaker. It's got a, audio player. It's a good looking box. It's a great looking box. In fact, you know what? It's a good what? looking device. You know what? This box is kind of unusual because. It's heavy. Yeah, it's heavy, but here's the thing before you open it, oh, yeah. um, most boxes are kind of square. Look at this one. Yeah. It's not square, it's, it's trapezoid ish. Yeah. Not quite. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. So it makes you wonder how, why, why is it like so that? You want to hold the bottom down. You want to pull okay. that off because this is not. Oh, 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 ah, very nice. Wow. Okay. okay so now I know why the supply. box was shaped like that. Yeah. So now I'm guessing look. this is a Bluetooth. Yeah, a Bluetooth. Yeah, uh, on speaker. here. Oh, sweet. Wow. Oh, you know what? So if I unbox it, I get to, I get to play with it, right? 
this was actually sent to me, and I just remembered what it is. <laughs> Those are electrostatic speakers. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, that would be bad if it was embargoed. <laughs> oh my God, that would be so bad if it's embargoed. It's not, uh, is it? <laughs> but I hope it's not. Trey Volo's electrostatic panel technology delivers precision vocals and harmonies the way they're meant to be heard. They're electrostatic. It integrates a noise-canceling microphone that enables you to sound crystal clear on your phone. So it's a speakerphone as well. 12-hour battery life lets you take your music anywhere in style, independently amplified with an optimized woofer slash radiator system for crisp, tight bass. It's so, a really good looking device. So I like it. What I'm thinking is, I'm thinking, there we go. You're your Mark Logan yeah. This actually, you can see it. I don't know if we can get, can you see it? It says big. That is actually a woofer in there. And it's got, I'm, I'm guessing that one side of this is a woofer and the other is a passive radiator. So this is the base coming out of mm -hmm. here. And then these electrostatic panels here are for the actual like left and right speakers. Yeah. Okay, I'm guessing. Why don't you tell everybody what electrostatics are? Okay, that's a good. The 50, yeah, that's a good point. So the way electrostatic, the way normal speakers work, or the way even like these woofers work, um, the big cone that was in there that you can kind of see, the, they apply electricity to a coil on the back of it, and they push it through a magnet. So the whole surface of this thing goes in and out, in and out. But an electrostatic speaker is just a thin panel of film sandwiched between some metal grills. So you can kind of see there's a, a great kind of texture. And the little thin film, you apply electric current to the film and the whole sheet of film acts like a speaker. It, yeah. The whole sheet moves. So it should be cool. And I am, I, I'm, I'm really impressed with how small it folds up, that it has these two large electrostatic panels, plus the woofer in there as well, and it's a speakerphone. That's a great design. Does anybody have any idea how much? Oh, $299, Paul knew what I was going to wow, ask. not bad. 299 okay, so I cannot wait. I and mean, if it sounds as good as I think it expected to. I know, as soon as we're done, we're going to crank that bad boy up, and it. we'll check that out. So. All right. That is true. Yeah. That all, I mean, from the looks of it and everything and the technology of it, I it already think it's, it's very cool. All right. I'm hoping it lives up to expectations. I call dibs on your desk. Right. <laughs> okay. How about this? This one came from our friends at FedEx. Wow. What is it? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, it looks like a battery case <clears throat> for the iPhone 6. Woohoo! You have an iPhone I 6. I do. So and this, I, I was actually looking for a battery well, case here, not hold long that. ago. Um, I could not find one. There was. I went to Best Buy and there were well, none on the Well, there shelves. you go. That is the, what is that? That is the... Refuel Invictus. Refuel from Invictus. From iBats. Okay, from iBats. I think it just pop. Uh, will it just slide, slide out? Oh, there we go. Power protection mobility. How big is the battery? That's... 3200 milliamp hour battery. So that's about, oh, that should double, that yeah. should double your, your iPhone. Yep. Okay, let's see here. The only thing I generally don't like about these cases is how much bulk they add to the phone. Mm. But uh, I've got to figure out. You got to be smarter than the box. Well, oh, oh, okay. You got to actually cut the seal on both sides. That usually helps. You would think I would have learned that by you now. You got the knife. There we go. Okay. So it looks like um, it's not too bad. No, though. it's not bad. It looks like one of those that you snap off yep. and slide the you s snap the thing apart. Mm -hmm. yep, just pop it off. Pop it off there somehow. <clears throat> Open. And then it's got the little uh, adapter here, and then there's a big battery right there. So it doesn't look like it'll make it too much thicker. No. A little bit thicker. A little bit. It, it also has a nice rubberized texture yeah, to it. Yeah, it feels good. We'll give it a try, let you yep. guys know what we think. Yep, all right. Let's see, what else we got here? Here's something. Uh, actually, this one is it got Lynn Wilkerson's name on it. Oh, I know what's in there then. So, it's food of some kind. <laughs> yes. Lynn. Thought I asked you to stop doing this. Lynn is always trying to fatten us up. Let's see what he's done here. Oh, it's probably chocolate covered bacon. Oh my God, again. no. Even better. The Jacobson Salt Company, salty caramels, oh. handmade in Portland, Oregon. Better, oh my God. Open those up just to see, make sure they're good. Yeah, I, I am just, I really do love caramel. I mean, I love yeah, I caramel. Look at that. The problem is if we eat this right now, <laughs> we will not be able to talk because it's going to stick. So just we'll set these right here. I guess the audience will have to 
yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the audience wants to do some testing. Here's one more for you. All right. And I will take this one right here. Let's do it. And uh, we'll double up what we got. What do we have here? This is a Toshiba one terabyte. Is this just a drive? Oh, yes. Portable yeah. wireless drive. Wireless drive. Read oh, it from the back. Excellent. There you go. Smart storage they drive. Sent, they sent this for us to review because uh, this one is one that you can put your data on and then it also becomes like a wireless. So it's a just a, it's a one spot. terabyte drive, but I don't have to plug and, and hotspot. Yes. But now I don't have to bother plugging it into one of my ports. That is correct. So I could get the new MacBook. I don't need to worry about the ports. That is correct. You could do that. What do you know? There you go. What a show. Yeah. So we'll have to give that one a try. Now, here's something. I have no idea what this is. Uh, I literally cannot quite tell what it is yet. Ken, do you know? This is the HLD8G camera grip. Okay. Oh, this is an Olympus camera grip. So we got a new camera, and this is the grip for it. This one is one that clearly screws on to the bottom yeah, of the camera. The standard mount there. And uh, what is it going to give you here? It's going to give you... Just better oh, okay. So it's going to thicken it up and give you the, uh, the extra controls up here. Got a knob and a button here. So that's cool. We'll have to check it out on the actual camera. I'm sure, Ken, this goes straight to you so you can play with that. Uh, and we will get that review done on that camera with the grip now. I like so. it. Okay, guys, uh, that's it for this episode. So thanks for tuning in and sticking with us throughout. Um, I guess next week it's going to be, I don't know, maybe, I have no maybe idea. you, maybe me, maybe Cal. We've got a lot of people here who are doing the show. So stay tuned. We'll be back. That is Scott Ellis. You can follow him on Twitter at VS Ellis. You can also get him on Google Plus at google.com forward slash plus Scott Ellis. Yeah, and that's John P., John Pose. Yep. And as always, you can find him on Twitter, at John Pose. Indeed. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Ciao. And it's time for our candy. Let's do it. I'm hungry. I'm sure everybody, everybody wants to get some of this. Everybody wants some. Want some? Ken? Candy? Pass it back. Good shooting, Tex. I know. I'm. I'm. The, I'm the master. They were on the Carter. Oh, those are good. I mean, they're awful. You'll hate them. Let's try that. Thanks. You're right. not gonna like these. I better take them away from you. Oh, okay. I see. Salted caramel. All right. Are we done? Mmm. We didn't talk about the skulls, so tell me what the... Oh! You said oh. we were going to do something on skulls. I'm guessing since you've been following me on Pinterest, you know that I have an obsession with skulls. Okay, the reason I brought it up is because all he posts on Pinterest is skulls. Well, that's not true, but it's my biggest board by far. 98% of what he posts <laughs> are skulls, and I was like... You There's have some good-looking art up there. Badass. So I decided I'm going to actually make you something. I'm going to make you some metal art. Something with a skull in it. I love it. Yeah, because John makes think, awesome metal art. If you have skull out of metal, he's gonna go dig that one. Uh, so you're, uh, not, you're not gonna kill anybody I know for this, are you? Uh -huh. <laughs> they don't need a hard. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, hey. I'm glad we didn't decide to eat these like during the actual show. No, that would have been awesome. We should have done it. Paul says, "What kind of skull? All kinds." Just go to uh, follow him on Pinterest. On Pinterest, vs Ellis, and I've got a skull board up there with a whole bunch, and it's. Just really cool artist, artistic mm -hmm. skulls of different kinds I found. Where'd that come from? There it goes. Paul found it. Oh, yep. Paul is, Paul is been, fast. Paul is the man. Have you always been a skull guy? Yeah, ever since I was a kid. I don't know why. I've just I'm always... Made, Locos Del 136 is in Puerto Rico. We missed a few. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. David oh. is in North Carolina. Alexandria, Virginia. Yeah. Copenhagen. Chicago. More see in Denmark when we go. Puerto That's Rico. Right. Yeah, yeah. Are alien skulls? Are you into alien skulls? I just if they were just, cool looking, that, I, right? I guess they could be. I just most of them are, you know, human. -ish. Mm. This, this is <laughs> I collect human skulls. Sticky. Nothing strange about that, right? Um, Tommy, you, you are absolutely correct, and I, I will tomorrow. What do you think about the skull for the Punisher? I think that's one of the coolest skulls designed it's a good one. ever. It's a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. But if you go look at that pinboard, there's some pretty awesome ones on there.
Yeah, you do find good ones. Uh, okay, any other last questions for you guys before we wrap it up? Have you seen the Daredevil uh, Netflix series? The trailer looks good. No, there's a Daredevil Netflix series? Oh, you you like start it up now, right? Yeah, turn it on and let's see how it sounds. Yeah, let's see how this thing Hopefully sounds. It's got some power. It should have some power. Oh, yeah. Okay. That we're gonna, sounds good. We're going to crank this up, boys and girls. Yeah, let's hear that thing. Yeah, Settings. Way, that is really freaking good. It's really hard, though. Maybe because it's cold. I need, a, I need a microwave mine. Oh, intercepted. <laughs> Y'all want some more? Pug Marvel's Venom Skull. I don't think I know what that one looks like. But we'll check it out. Pass them back. He's like trying to keep it all. It? What? Like they have the really long black tongue coming out of it? Yeah, I got like that. venom? Right. Don't know. Okay. Don't know it. <clears throat> Bank Trevolo. Trevolo. Trevolo? Here we go. So Boston Timberlake. Boston Timberlake? Okay, let's see. Country music for you boys and girls. Soggy Bottom Boys? No, no. Greg Morgan, Redneck Yacht Club. All right. Mm. I gotta. Do not eat. <laughs> I gotta choke on oh, this, uh, yeah. this caramel stuff here. Kenny G? No, there's no Kenny G in here. Uh, Hubert said you have to get certificates for the surveillance app. Yes, that is true. Um, huh? Yeah. There's two free ones now. There's two, at least on the one that I have. And then there's like a four pack is like 200 bucks. In all fairness, uh, they're sending me free ones. So, you know. Uh, for the review, they're they're giving me the certificates or whatever, but I'm gonna factor that into the cost of the whole thing. You know, you got to pay for, you got to pay for the uh, cameras. You got to pay for all the the wiring, the cabling you need, the Ethernet everywhere. You got to pay for the actual Synology device. You got to pay for the for the licenses effect effectively for a, for any cameras you have more than two. So it's not cheap to put these cameras everywhere. No, I've got a Mm. And so I was going to put one outside, but I, I just couldn't get a good enough wireless reception. But I had gotten the camera and had played around with the software a little bit. Mm -hmm. My Synology. Yep, yep. All right. Solar powered Wi Fi IP cameras. Yes, that would be fun. Oh, Hubert says he, I have one, four cameras. Cool. Well, I guess all yours would be solar powered. Yes, technically anything in my house is pretty much solar powered. <laughs> Good point. Your water to me is normally No, like. I'm just kidding. Yeah, we couldn't get through everything we had on our nope. sheet. We had to cut out a couple of things, but eh, that's okay. Uh, Steve says a brief insight into John's music collection. Mm -hmm. That is true, but it's I've got pretty eclectic. I've got I've got I don't know that there's any kind of music I don't have because the only thing that I used to not listen to and I know everybody hears me joke around about country music and stuff now 
But I used to not listen to country music. I, I hated anything country until about a year ago. You, actually, you still don't. You listen to that stuff they make now. That is true. I don't hear Waylon Jennings and that, Pearl That's true. I don't listen to a lot of the older country music. I listen to some, like a little Johnny Cash and stuff, but not a lot. Most of the country music that I listen to now, probably, probably real country listeners would say I'm not really... Do you, do you listen to Willie Nelson? I like Willie Nelson, but I don't listen to him. I would not like pull up Willie Nelson and be like, oh, let's listen to some Willie. That's if not... It comes on, you wouldn't turn it off. If, if it's yeah. Because it's Willie Nelson. But if it's just out about respect. anybody else... Out yeah, out of respect for Willie, yeah. I wouldn't turn it off. I know you got a lot of respect for Willie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, here we go again. <laughs> Bring it in full circle. Any Bach? <laughs> That's a good question. Cheeky wants to know... Did I have any Bach? I don't do have, you? no, I don't have any Bach on here. Rachmaninoff, anybody like that? I do have, I do have like the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, oh, and uh, I might have something classical <laughs> on here, but the, not uh, a lot. Do you have the Metallica S&M uh, album? I don't think I have, I don't you do, I'm sure. the what? think I have the any Metallica, Metallica on here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Polka, yeah. polka? <laughs> Tune Maker got me. No, there's no Polka music on no here. Polka. Monty's asking, Rascal Flats? Yes, yeah. I definitely have Rascal Flats on here. Mariano. Rihanna Rhymes? No. I don't think I have that. Erasure? Wait, sure. Yeah, I have Erasure. You do? do you have Depressed Mode? Depressed Mode, I do have Depressed Mode. Nice. Jazz, I absolutely have Jazz. I love Jazz. You're in a fact, guy. in fact, I listen to, yeah, watercolors. In the US, we have uh, on the, uh, what's the satellite radio in the car uh, called? XM. XM. Sirius. On XM or whatever it is, uh, channel 66 is called Watercolors, and that's my, yeah, that's what I normally listen to in the car, actually. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Steve, funny, I was actually uh, Vivaldi. I don't rocking think I have out to any some Bach this weekend. I, that was just on my mind. Start with some Yo-Yo really Yo Ma. I do like Yo-Yo Ma. Boy, he's good. Yeah. yeah. Saw him at the Dallas Symphony Orchestra about a year and a half ago. Really? Wow. We're Zydeco. Nope, I don't <laughs> have any of that. That's a good one. No, yeah. We can get some jambalaya. And, 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 I am, and I don't have any mar mariachis or bagpipes. Oh, we got to so get some bagpipes. I should have not told them that I have every kind of music on here because these guys can figure out yeah, what I don't you're, have. You're going to start getting MP3s in your ear. I know, exactly. <laughs> And yeah, I have a lot of it. Yeah. Michael Moffat said, "I think maybe the new country is like what smooth jazz is to jazz." <laughs> I agree. I, I think actually that is an ex that is that is exactly a spot on comparison, because if you listen to real like old school jazz and then you listen to smooth jazz, yeah. it sounds, I guess it sounds in a way kind of more modern and more electric. More yeah, electric, more technical, it's not more old techy. Old. It's not. Yeah. It's it's a little less feely yeah. and more technical, yeah. you know. And uh, it's and not Coltrane. It's not Miles Davis. Yeah, old school. It's not Count Basie. Old school jazz and and country artists. It was mainly about them mm -hmm. being on there singing or doing whatever the hell they were doing, yeah. playing their trumpet or whatever. And it was all analog. Yeah. So so it was warm. It had it had uh, soul to it. Yeah. Oh, Jonathan wants to know, how about metal? Oh, yeah. Dragon Force? Now, I, don't I don't even know who Dragon Force I, I'm is. Not, I'm not, Jonathan, I'm not really familiar with Dragon Force, but there's a young lady um, on YouTube and, of course, on Google Plus named uh, Tina S. Go look her up. She plays guitar and she does covers. She basically plays over different songs. She's in her teen, teenage years. I don't know exactly how old she is. She is an absolutely amazing, mind-blowingly good guitar we'll player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And she did something, and I want to say it was Dragon Force the other day. And it's a really long video, but I couldn't take my eyes off watching it. She, she's just all over the place. It was amazing. So. All right, here's some of there the... Since everybody's trying to guess, here's some of the... Here's, like, just reading down the list of, like, people here. The Offspring. Oh, yeah. Daryl Hall and John Oates. Hall and Oates, baby. Norman Brown. Kim Waters. Those are jazz. Tyler Farr. Country. Craig Morgan. Alan Jackson. Mm. Alan Jackson. Alan Jackson's old school. Yadahuchi. I like Alan Jackson. Najee. That's jazz. Uh, Johnny Cash. The Clash. Falco. Rock hey, Me Amadeus. Hey, hey, hey. The Picture Amadeus. Uh, Justin Herbie. Yeah. yeah, Herbie. I do have the Commissar. <laughs> Rat. Round and oh, Round. Yeah. That doesn't, does that count as metal? That or counts just, as it was hair band. Rats, it's rats metal. kind of metal. I think yeah. they're metal. They were definitely right? metal. Hair Counting band, Crows. Yeah. Kirk Whalum. Um, jazz, Run DMC, jazz. Beastie wow. Boys, jazz. 
beastie. <laughs> uh, Brian Culber Culberson, uh, Eagle Eye Cherry. I'm really all over the board here. Sexy Back, JT featuring Timbaland. Wayman Tisdale, ZZ Top, Thomas Raymond Dolby. Tisdale. That's yeah. ZZ Top, little rockabilly. Kenny Chesney, The Clash, Mark Cohn, Silver oh, Thunderbird. Yeah. One of my favorite songs of all time. He did uh, Walking in Memphis. He did. Which was a great tune. Mm -hmm. yeah. Peter Gabriel, Sledgehammer. Fog Hat, Slow Ride. Oh, good song. Da, 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 uh -huh. Sade, Smooth Operator. Mm, Sade. Uh, that, is, that is one of the smoothest songs. Oh, yeah. Sawyer Brown, Some Girls Do. That's country. Tube Maker, yeah. She also does a good version of Eruption and a whole bunch of other stuff. You have uh, Georgia line, oh, there you go. County line, or whatever it is. DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Yeah, a lot. Hey, get uh, jiggy with it. Frankie Ballard, Ballard, Bush, Aerosmith. Pour some sugar on me, John. Yeah. No, Def Leppard. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Eddie Money. Can you believe I have Eddie Money? The Dave Brubeck Quartet. Aha. Uh, -huh. uh, Dave Brubeck. Some good stuff. Johnny Paycheck, take this job and shove it. Now, if you're I a jazz fan, if you're a jazz fan, um, you know the. Well, I think you were out of town actually last week. The crew here was down at the DSO, uh, doing the live stream from a special event that was happening. Yeah, I missed it. And uh, the closing act. Well, they got everybody up for the very closing act, but right before that, uh, Doc Severinsen got up and. Oh wow! A little bit. Oh Doc wow! Doc was there, man. Wow. Look, oh, yeah. ELO, it was, it was Toto, yeah. Africa, Fog Hat. Yeah, these. Oops, what, I just started something. Let her go. Yeah, Shocker found that YouTube video of, of Tina doing the Dragon Force song. Boney James, okay. Zach Brown. I'll go watch that. It's awesome. Run DMC, Bruno Mars. Really? Bruno Mars? Can you believe I have Bruno Mars? 50 Cent? You got any Britney Spears on there? No, there's no bi Britney Spears. I yeah. do have Biz Marquee, yeah. Just a Friend. Do you have 35 Cent? That's a good song. Right. Uh, let's see. Big Daddy uh, Orchestra, Jump, Jive, and Whale. House of Pain, Jump Around. Jesse's Girl by Rick Springfield. Classic. Travis Tritt, that's old school country, right? You got the, what's her name, Smith song, I Whip My Hair Back and Forth? No. no? Harry Connick Jr., Chris McDonald Orchestra, Craig Morgan, Beastie Boys, Cypress Hill, Peter Gabriel, Chris McDonald, Phil, Phil Collins, Matchbike 20, oh, yeah, Alabama. I love Phil Collins. Genesis, man. Bare Naked Ladies, Vanilla Ice, Jason Mraz. Cheap trip. See, minute. they you all just run together. Blew through vanilla ice. I there. did. Ice Ice Baby. It's right here. He, he, Keith he's Sweat. It, he's like, oh. I'm just gonna keep going. Just keep going. Just don't Keith stop. Keith Sweat. <laughs> hey, did you know Twisted that? Sister. Does that count as metal? Yeah, Twisted yeah, Sister. Yeah, they were definitely yeah, hair band era. I want to rock. It's a good song. Flock of Seagulls. I actually have Flock oh, of yes. Seagulls on here. And I ran. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I There's ran. only one. There's only one. <laughs> Ice T, I'm your pusher. Oh, wow. I've got Ice T. I've got Dave, Spose. I'm alone. awesome. <laughs> Joan Jett. Joan Jett? You any Pat Benatar? Oh, I, uh, I don't think I've heard. Where are you? Dier yeah. Dierks Bentley. Love that guy. New shoes. I actually have new shoes wow. on here. Now I just checked huh? out. I, like I can't wait. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Digital Underground. Yeah. Humpty Dance, of course. You all know that I have that on I'm here. I'm waiting for you to get to the Rick Astley. Oh, I've got so him on here. we can end this thing. <laughs> I do. Actually, one of his songs, uh, it wasn't Never Gonna Give You Up. I think it was the other one. that. Was yeah. Like, um, today's like the 35th anniversary or the 30th anniversary of it or something like that. <laughs> Jaybird, Honky Tonk, Badonka Donk. Frank Zappa. Right. Good call, oh, Shocker. You know do you what? have any Frank Zappa? I don't think I have any Frank Zappa on here right now. Oh. I need to fix that. The butthole yeah. surfers. No, I don't have them on here. I don't have Shania Twain. I am Devil Went Down to Georgia. <laughs> Pablo does. Yeah. Yeah, that's his soundtrack. I do have two versions of the Devil Went Down to Georgia on here, Steve. Nice. Two on here. Charlie Daniels. I'm going to admit something to you people, even though this could this could get me in trouble, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to admit it to you. I'll stand back. And you got to head out? I got to head out. Thanks oh, for coming well, by. Thanks for having me. Steve, and we didn't get to talk wine, but maybe next time. Yeah. yeah. Well, next time. Come up to Virginia. We got good wine up you there. Count That's, on right. Uh, That's right. That's yeah. right. Fill uh, me up. Uh, thank you again. Thanks, Steve. We'll, we'll see you later good on. Good seeing you. Okay, here's here's the big admission, okay? And I'm gonna admit it only because I wanna know I wanna know how many people share this this particular secret uh Shameful. quirk. <laughs> including my sister in law. 
who is going to either punish me mercilessly for what I'm about to say, <laughs> or maybe agree with me. I do not, I do not enjoy listening to female musicians as much as male musicians really? in general. Really? In general, there are songs that are that there are definitely songs that I like that are uh, that are from that, that that feature female vocalists, but for some reason, I generally like songs that have male lead vocalists more. And I wonder you don't if you like Natalie Merchant. What does she sing? Uh, she used to be with Ten Thousand Maniacs. Like, name a song. Tell me a song, oh, and I'll tell you if I like it. Uh, you would have listened to her in college, kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I know the name. I just can't remember. That linger, like linger. Yeah, like linger. It's, oh. I'm not saying I don't like that song. I like that song, and I would listen to that song. But no, I don't think I like it. Like I wouldn't choose. I wouldn't be like, oh, I want to hear linger right okay, now. Yeah. What about female jazz? Like, Nat, was it uh, Diana Krall? There are certain you know, types of music, like Sade. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. That woman is. She has the sexiest voice, like I think I've ever heard. You would rather listen to her than anyone. What's her name? Natalie Cole. Natalie Cole. I mean, yeah. oh my yeah. God! Yeah, yeah. Like Whitney Houston. I mean, for those for those kinds of things, their their vo their voices are. Yeah. What does she sing? Uh, <laughs> I know that. I, I know. I know the name is a. Stuff. Yeah. I, uh, so, she did Skyfall. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. There are some amazingly talented now than ever towards female singers. Really? Yeah. I mean, I I, I listen to. I was, told, I was listening to Pat Benatar on the way in this morning. I think Ann Wilson from Heart has hands down one of the best rock and roll voices yeah. there has ever been. Yeah. Um, Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm. They're a fairly new hard rock band, but she has got amazing Good voice. Good voices. Why not a Judd? Um, couldn't tell you. But you're not alone guy. because Shocker said, I feel the opposite. Tube Maker says, I'm the opposite. What about yeah. you guys? Do you mostly listen to male? Is, would you say your music collection is more oh, male or voice female voice, voice dominated? It depends on the genre. Yeah. To me, it's like electronic music for some reason. So there's no women. <laughs> See, she's, she's male dominated, okay? In a, in a, in a doctor. <laughs> I am not seeing the gangster rap thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, that surprises really me. Really He's actually not a, he's not, he's not a gangster rapper. He knows somebody named Big Sean. <laughs> see, yeah, all Marco you people. Mac, yes, awesome. See, why is it that everybody is? Why is it that everybody's dodging the question? Okay. Now, Michael said I'm with you, but I do love Diana Krall. Okay. Yeah. I want to know, you know, what uh, uh, what what I want to know is is your personal music collection and your taste. Is it more male vocal dominated or female? Don't tell me about individual women who have amazing voices. That's not what I'm asking. There are billions of talented women. I'm just asking, is your personal music collection more male vocal dominated or female vocal dominated? That's what I want to know. So I think if I were to answer just here? that question, uh -huh. if you were to look at my music collection, there probably are more male singers. But a lot of the music I listen to is tends to be harder rock stuff, which tends to be very dominated by male singers. So you're saying you it's not that you prefer male singers, it's just the kind of music you listen to is more male-dominated. Yes, I think that's the case. Okay. That's probably more what it is for me, too, because I either listen to country or harder, harder rock. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so do you Steve have says, Hasselhoff on here? Oh, no, there's no <laughs> Hasselhoff. Steve says his is 90% instrumental, which makes sense because he's a proper, yep. actual musician, okay? Tom, Tom says this is fairly well split between the sexes. And Rob says his is too. And Monty says it's dependent upon the mood and the genre. Celtic is more female dominated? Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, totally. Definitely. I don't have any Celtic music. That's some good stuff. Yeah. Hmm. There's something in those Gaelic lilts that is really cool. Right. Huh. Yeah, Rupert, I like a lot of classical stuff as well. I'm, yeah, you were playing some I this morning. I gravitate toward that. I was actually, that was the Halo soundtrack. Really? Yeah, <laughs> there's some good music. <laughs> yeah, they did a good job on that. But there was actually uh, Michael Lindsey Sterling, or you know who she is, violin player. Oh, yeah. 
and she did a cover of one of the Halo songs. And cool. Michael said, "Wow, I was thinking, I was thinking it'd be fun to travel with you from Dallas yeah. to CES, but now not so sure after hearing my music collection, I guess." Well, we didn't listen to any music on our drive. Yeah, when you and I were driving, we didn't listen to music. We listened to we. Howard Stern. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we listened to Howard Stern, and we listened to some, whatever podcast you could download on your phone. Radio Lab. Radio Lab and things like that. Some uh, Joel Osteen. Yeah. Yeah, we listened to Joel Olstein. You did not. I swear to God we did. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we listened to Joel Olstein. It wasn't for the, yeah, it was for, it was for. We were learning. Yeah. What, what exactly were you learning? I'm curious. We were learning from Joel Olstein that it is important to ignore the facts. And just have this big stupid smile on your face all just the time and sell a lot of books? Don't, that, don't pay attention to the facts. That's what we were learning from Joel. You never have. No, I've never. So Joel and I are like this, okay? I mean, we both completely ignore the facts. There you go. He's, wow. His wife spent $25 million on the furniture in their, uh, in their office. Good to, be, good to be Mrs. Olstein then. Indeed. <laughs> It's all right, books right. and yeah. yeah. Oh, I have Inya, Monty. I've got Inya yeah, in my fantastic. phone. Fantastic. Yeah. Or in Orinoco Flow or whatever. Isn't that yeah. what it's called? I've got that on my phone. A lot of good albums. I got a lot of crazy, crazy stuff in here. So, what kind of gangster rap artists? The game. Nick wants to know what type of gangster rap do you listen to, Shannon? I, I like old school. Old school. Yeah. Old school. Name some gangster people. Rap. Uh, N.W.A. I'm your pusher. Yeah, he's a pimp. Pimp daddy. <laughs> oh, Inya is considered Celtic? Wow, well then I do have Celtic. How about that? I did not know that. Yeah, I do have Amish Paradise in here. I do have uh, several Weird Al songs in here. Like, I'm fat. Weird Al. Michael says, okay, well, I would jewels, travel with you <laughs> if we listen to talk, love, talk radio and stuff. Weird Al's good stuff. Sir Mix-A-Lot, Baby ba Got yeah. Back, yeah, but that is not gangster rap. Definitely not. <laughs> That's like Tone Loke. Who he's not guys, gangster, Who are the guys in fun. the 80s that were always getting in trouble? The rap group that... N.W. No. Nasty As They Wanna Be was the album. Oh. Naughty As They Wanna something like Naughty that. Naughty by Nature? No. No, not Naughty by Nature. They weren't really gangster rap. No, yeah. they weren't. They were no. just raunchy, but... I can't remember who that oh, was. Oh, two live crew. Two, two yeah. live crew. There you go. One and one. <laughs> We're having some fun. Never mind. No, oh, wait. Was that two That's live about crew? as much. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's them. Crew. Yeah, that's right. That's about as much of that song yeah, as you can I sing. I like to play this game. So call it Amtrak. We like to call it the train. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just saw a side of Dave I didn't know existed. Oh, brother. That. Yeah. I did not know that. All, All right, right, gang. That's it. It's 5 o'clock, 5.10. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. At Holly. You got any Jimmy Buffett on there? Somebody text, somebody Twitter, tweet, uh, at, tweet. Yeah, I do have that on here, actually. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> tweet Holly Pose and tell her that I'm coming home. Yeah. To Marguerite. And Windustry, too. I know she's Yeah, that's right. Ready and for Windustry. Me to make Guys, have a good one. Bye, gang. Bye.